Hello and welcome in today's exciting episode. I made a 1950s petticoat out of netting. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. Now I do want to make a Vlogmas video about all the dresses, vintage 1950s dresses that I made in November. But before I can do that, I feel like I really need to make a 1950s petticoat so that I can show off all the dresses to the full effect. So I have this fluoro orange netting and I have yards and yards of it. I think I have about six yards, which is definitely enough to make a um, petticoat. I was going to buy a pattern for a petticoat and then I was like, yeah, it's just basically a tiered skirt. So I'll wing it. So um, I've decided to use the dimension, the measurements on my, um, the last dress that I did, the sage dress. So basically I'm doing four lengths of um, from salvage to salvage of um for the bottom tier and then two lengths for the middle tier and then I was going to do a yoke out of like a top tier out of cotton lawn but um yeah after I made the bottom tier and the middle tier I put them together and spoiler alert um yeah they were long enough just like that so yeah so here are the bottom t the bits for the bottom tier and oh gosh PSA if you are going to work with netting for the love of god wear long sleeves like a t-shirt with long sleeves and I don't know even maybe fingerless gloves because I'm sitting here editing this and I have scratches all up and down my arms and on the back of my hands and it is so painful so yeah just Remember to use your duller scissors. I have one pair of scissors. They're quite old and I only use them for cutting netting and for cutting sequin fabrics. And um, yeah, even though I used the duller scissors I could find that were still, you know, in reasonable shape. They, yeah, I just forget because I haven't made a tutu in a while. I just forget that, yeah, just because there's so many sharp edges, you sort of can't avoid them. When you're making a jacket, and I use this as backing fabric on my jackets, um, because you the pieces of my jackets, that the jacket is quite fitted, so each piece is quite small, and you don't end up cutting yourself on the edges very often. But when you're making a tutu, oh my goodness. And this is essentially the same as that. So what I did was, um, yeah, I had four lengths for the bottom and I sewed all the edges together, but I um, had enough to do two layers for my bottom tier. So that's them there. And then I just sort of, and my middle tier or what became my top tier was just two lengths. And now I'm just sort of um, finding the half and then the quarter. And then I sort of pinned like it down to the 16th. And then I sort of pinned them together. And what I did was I did a long tier, the short middle tier, and then I did the long tier again. So Basically, I'm sewing my seam on the inside. So once it's finished, this whole thing is going to be turned upside down and the two long bits are going to flop down and there's just going to be the one tier, one bit of netting that is the top tier. And that way you won't get any scratching on your thighs because all the seams are on the inside. So that's why I made it this way. And once I'd pin all the sixteenths um, points around it, then I went and I sort of halved and halved again until there were reasonable amounts. And then I put box pleats on one side of one of the long ones I made into box pleats to pleat it down. And on the other side, I did knife pleats. 
And um, if you want to gather, go for it, gather. But I just, I just find it looks messy. So I prefer pleats all the time. And if you're worried that your machine won't be able to deal with a couple of layers of netting and nothing else, because it's basically plastic and you do kind of need a really sturdy vintage sewing machine to make it, then um, yeah, just cut off a salvage of any of your fabrics and use that or by bias binding, whatever. I just had a pink salvage and I used that. And here it is. I sort of, turn, as I said, after I'd finished machine sewing it, I sort of turned the whole thing upside down and then I put, went around and pinned it together. So I will hand sew that seam together. But um, yeah, I was losing the light. So I just pinned it onto my mannequin on top of the dress just so I could see what it looks like. And yeah, I've realized the two layers are fine, especially since I tend to wear my petticoats and my um, modern day skirts around my hips rather and vintage dresses of course have either a waist or a high like they sit on your natural waist which is really quite high up so yeah that is about where I would wear mine so it's quite low so there's not really any room for a third tier at the top there obviously is room for another tier at the top and if you factor in seam allowance there's plenty of room but yeah, as I said, I always push my skirts down to a comfortable point. But if you like a high waist, then yeah, do a, a top tier that's sort of like a corset. Um, I'm hoping that later on this, oh, and here I'm trying to decide whether to use the ballet elastic in the um, sort of tan beige colour or go with the white because it's sort of a cleaner look. But I just, I like the ballet elastic so I just yeah I just find the white too jarring and my worry is that you would be able to see it th through the dresses the vintage dresses because it's so white white and um, also as I said I wear my um, petticoats quite low so it would just look weird it would almost look like the waistband of my underpants I think so yeah I decided to go with the beige um ballet elastic instead because it just it will just look normal and um yeah so now to carefully unpin all these all these pins at the top here and I just have to do the sort of so, oh, I, I do have to hand sew this what I'm going to do is sort of turn it upside down and hand sew that but I'll do it in at the after dark so yeah I quickly machine sewed the um the elastic in and yeah I'm so glad I went with the ballet elastic it looks so much better and I will do these pins um hand sew that and get rid of those pins but for now because I'm losing the light I'm just going to quickly photograph it and oh my gosh doesn't it make all the dresses look extra pretty Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> it turned out awesome. But um, yeah, it's sort of a bit gappy here under this one. The pink one sort of shows all the flaws. But um, you can certainly see why people wore belts with all their 1950s dresses because it really does hike out the skirts but um yeah as you can see it's really quite gappy and I think I'm definitely going to make another one I'm going to leave this one the way it is because I absolutely love this and you probably saw a glimpse at the start of how I'm going to wear it with my Chanel jacket but um yeah this one here um the that top tier next time I make this I'm only going to use one length for the top tier instead of two lengths because at the moment it's like three meters which is over three foot that top tier and that's just way too wide um I'm going to do it salvage to salvage it's about um one and a half meters which is just less than two feet which is still quite a lot two yards which is still quite a lot but um yeah
it will just make it sit better and I'll use the exact same amount for the bottom tier because I think that looks awesome but yeah that top tier needs to be shorter and more compact but um yeah oh he's I think this is becoming my favorite dress just because it looks so vintage it looks like it's something from the 1930s or 40s with that print and here's what it looks like with the um oh I just love this outfit I'm definitely wearing that outfit it's adorable but still really practical and really like you could just wear it and not have to worry about yeah because I'm a little bit of a klutz a graceful klutz but a klutz and yeah that just it's so easy to wear and it looks gorgeous under the flamingo one it looks so beautiful and you can't see the swishiness obviously because um but yeah the weight of this dress this is one of the um dresses where there's quite a lot in folded up into the hem so it's got a nice heavy hem so it's sort of even though the petticoat is incredibly full it's sort of yeah the yin and yang of the heavy hem plus the you know really beefy petticoat it's just a beautiful combination and this dress is so transformed by a um, petticoat it is unbelievable it makes your waist look so tiny and as you can see yeah you really can see the fluoro orange underneath this one I think because it's just it's a slightly it's still a cotton poplin but for some reason it's just a slightly thinner one or maybe it's because it's that baby blue background yeah when I, when I had the petticoat under the flamingo one I didn't feel like it affected the color at all really whereas this one yeah you can sort of see like up to the pockets you can also see the pockets on it now so that's pretty awesome but it just makes your waist look so tiny I think it's also because I put the belt on this one it's adorable like without a petticoat this it's still a nice dress but it's very much a work day dress you, you know um in the vintage in the historic sense that's you know it's one that you would wear on a work day whereas yeah when you put the petticoat under it it transforms I'm just so happy with this change I'm going to go back and put another a new thumbnail on the um, video where I made this dress <laughs> because it looks so awesome with the petticoat underneath it really does but um yeah oh, sorry <laughs> I'm just so happy with the way this one looks now it's adorable. I mean, I love this dress anyway, but now I really, really love it. And I'm definitely going to make more of this pattern. It's the Butterick 60555. And um, yeah, I think if I make it in a solid color, just like a plain fabric, that will, yeah you really be able to see those pockets and it look magnificent. So here it is just by itself. And as you can see, yeah, I'm losing the light. But this is how I'm going to wear it, like just as a modern day. Jeans and a T-shirt and then dark jeans, dark T-shirt. And then over the top, I'm going to put my Chanel jacket and the my Fleura Orange um, petticoat with my Valentino, Fleura Green Valentino bag. That is going to be my go-to outfit um, featuring this. And yeah, I'm so happy that Sorry, I made I'm it. Sorry, I'm getting a bit, little bit gushy here, aren't I? Anyway, thank you for watching. And um, I am going to go and put some moisturizing clean <laughs> cream on these wounds of mine from, um, yeah, you really need to wear a long sleeves t-shirt and um, some, maybe even some fingerless gloves when you cut up, when you make a tutu. Oh, I'm so stupid. Yeah, I've got, I look like I've had a battle with a new kitten or something. You know how they just go, when they first realize they have claws, they go a bit scratch crazy. Yeah. That's what I look like. I've got scratches all over myself. Anyway, but yeah, now all my dresses are going to look absolutely gorgeous. And I can finally do the, um yeah, everything I made in November. And I'm going to be able to show them off to their full effect because they'll have this pretty 
this looks like a fashion illustration. It looks so good. I love this outfit. It's my new favorite thing. But I also love that flamingo dress. Anyway, I'm going to put balm on my wounds now. But um, yeah, happy Vlogmas.